Hi everyone, Pat here at the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore in Maitland, Florida. And today I'm going to give you instruction on the upgrade for the Stellar XE1, XJ1, and if you already have the XE2 and the XJ2, this video would still apply. It also applies to the baby lock versions of these machines because Brother makes the baby lock version of those machines for baby lock. So this video is also an add-on to the videos that I already have on YouTube that are for sewing, the sewing part of your XJ1 or 2, the embroidery part, or the IQ designer. So this is like the fourth add-on video of instruction for those machines. So stay with me. I'm going to go through the upgrade step by step and so you can learn how to use it and really enjoy this new upgrade. So I'm going to start by telling you what comes in the box when it comes to hardware. You're going to get the couching foot, your yarn couching foot. You're going to get the yarn couching guide. And you can see that on there is engraved EC. That's for embroidery couching. And then you're also going to get the 7 by 12 mag magnetic hoop, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. We're going to do this step by step. Okay, so first of all, I want to show you, we're going to come up here and touch the question mark. This is a part of the machine that gets a little overlooked. So that's why I'm coming in here. If you go to video and you go to, you select embroidery, these are all videos that you can watch on the features of your machine. So your yarn couching video is right here. It shows like a little red tail of yarn. So when you select it, the video is going to open up. I'm not going to show the whole video right now, but I wanted to make you aware of the video that's there for the feature that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to close it out and remember to go, it's where the question mark is. Okay, so we're going to return and close out. Now I'm going to come down the tabs down the side um, in my embroidery screen and I'm going to select the C, which is for couching. So this, you've got two categories under couching. You have the designs, the embroidery designs, and then you also have the lettering. So before I move on, I just want to show you one of my samples. So this is one of the built-in designs, and I stitched it out without yarn, and then I stitched it with yarn so that I always like to get an idea of what the stitching looks like. So that's without feeding yarn through, and it looks very nice without the yarn. And then this is feeding the yarn through. So let's move on here. So I'm going to go ahead and select here and then open up. This is where you open up all your designs that are strictly for couching. So when I select one of these designs for couching, the machine knows, I'm just going to go ahead and select a small one here the machine knows that I'm in couching mode, so to speak. So I want to point something out to you. When I open up my settings, it automatically slowed down my embroidery speed to 350 stitches per minute. Because it's important, obviously, when you're feeding yarn through your machine under the needle, that it's not going at 1,000 stitches per minute because you're asking for trouble if you do that. So the machine knows, and so it um, slows it down, and it also adjusts the embroidery foot height. Normally, when you're in embroidery, your embroidery foot height is lower, but it's accommodating, it lifts it two notches so that you could, it, the machine will accommodate the yarn underneath the foot. So it's going to do that automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and select OK. The other thing that it's not going to let you do is combine a couching design with another embroidery design. So if you want to do that, which it's very possible, um, especially if you're an advanced embroiderer, 
that you'll want to combine yarn couching with embroidery designs. Like for instance, you might want to put a monogram in there. So what you would need to do is do that as a, as a completely separate step. You would leave the couching and then go to embroidery and place it, um, your embroidery design, wherever you want it. Okay, so let's go back here. So we selected a design, but obviously we want to put the foot on. So this, I call this foot when when I'm teaching the class, the pigtail foot. So you see, it's got a hole here. That's where your needle is gonna go. And you can see that it's a relatively small hole. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I have the embroidery foot on right now. I'm gonna remove the embroidery foot and I'm going to put my couching foot on and it's gonna go on like this and screwed on here. So I installed the embroidery couching foot and you can see the screw is over here the pigtail which is your yarn guide is to the left hand side and then i have a little screw over here and if you watch the video a lot of people get confused with this and that's why i want to make sure that i explain this part of it you have a very small hole that your needle is going through here and the yarn has to go through that hole too. I've got the machine threaded through the normal threading path for my needle, and you can use your needle threader still when you go to thread your needle. And then I'm gonna bring my yarn down, and I am going to set this, my embroidery couching yarn guide, to the left-hand side of my machine. And all it does is a slot up here you just snap it up there. So the next thing I need to do is take my little screwdriver and this little screw to the right, I'm going to slot this in and I, I am going to turn it towards me about two or three turns. But what you're watching is that the foot is actually going to move. I'm going to get my stylus here. What I'm actually doing by turning this screw towards me is the foot is going to move over towards the right. I'm not moving the needle. A lot of people think I'm moving the needle. I'm moving the foot over to the right. So the needle is going into this hole more towards the left of the hole as opposed to the center of the hole. And why, why do I want that? Because my yarn is going to feed down from my yarn guide here through my pigtail and down in here and it's going to come in and go through the left hand side of this hole so i want my needle to stitch it down if i was to leave my needle exactly where it is right now in the center it could catch or not catch my yarn depending on the weight of my yarn so always and always when you're selecting yarn, start out small rather than um, a difficult textured yarn or a chenille. So you, you have to start um, basic as opposed to um, working with a heavier yarn. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my screwdriver back in here. And what you're going to see is that my foot is moving to the right. So my needle is going into that hole towards the left. Okay, so some of you might need to turn it a little bit more than others. I found normally when I teach this class that it can vary a little bit. Um, so what I'm checking, and you might, to see better, you might take a white piece of cardboard or something and put it in there because um, you wanna check and make sure that you don't put the needle, place the needle too close to your metal foot. The other thing that you can do is you can turn your wheel always towards you and make sure, this is probably one of the only instances that I crank my hand wheel because normally I use my needle up, needle down, but because I wanna be safe and I can tell that my needle is not hitting. So I think that I am good. 
The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just pulling up this thread, is I am going to do needle up, needle down, because I want to bring my needle up to the highest position again. So now let's go ahead and thread our yarn. I'm using a thread stand. I like using a thread stand for this. This is the two spool thread stand. So if you were to use a stand, you have more room to put your yarn on. However, if you don't have one, you may want to um, wind your own little ball of yarn like this. What's important is that when you start couching, that um, the yarn feeds through evenly and down under the needle because if it gets caught somewhere, it will stretch your yarn and your stitching um, will probably show. So know that when you're, when you're stitching, if you can see stitching, the yarn has been stretched or been caught up here. So tension is important and the, the yarn wants to be able to travel down the side of the machine and under the needle without getting caught on anything. So when I couch, I'm watching here, but I'm also watching all the time how my yarn is coming off my um, ball of yarn wherever I have put it. So let's go ahead and thread it using the thread stand. So I like to put it through here and then I'm going to put it through the second one here. Okay. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to bring it down and put it through my first yarn guide. And then I have a second one down here. So it travels down the side of the machine. And then I'm going to put it in the little pigtail that's on the left. This is what guides it down to my to my needle, so to speak. The next thing I need to do is to put it through the hole in my foot. So my favorite way of threading the hole in my foot is to make a thread cradle. This is a cut end and I've got a nice sharp end. So I'm going to put it through the hole in the foot, not, not my needle. And then I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to place it in the lasso, so to speak, in the, and then I'm going to take this end and I'm going to pull it through the hole in my foot. See how I'm pulling it through? Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead. I don't want all that slack. So I'll just pull this up a little bit. A lot of people get confused with this step because they think that it's going through the eye of the needle and it's not. I've got my needle threaded. And what I'm gonna do, can you see that I've got a little bit of like a tangle here? I'm gonna put my presser foot down. So, and now I, what I've done is I've separated my yarn from my needle. So just a little tip as we move forward here. If you wanted to unthread your yarn at any point, May always make sure that your presser foot is down because if I was to pull my yarn up to unthread it out of my foot and I have my presser foot up, my yarn is going to travel up my needle and it's going to get caught. So put your presser foot down and then you could um, pull your yarn up to unthread your machine. So now I'm going to take my tail and just move it over to the side. And this is my needle that's threaded. Okay, so now I have my machine threaded with my yarn. I have my embroidery thread threaded through my needle. I like to um, try to combine the color of my embroidery yarn to my yarn. Otherwise, there may be areas where your um, stitching, where your actual thread might show on your design, especially if you get tension on your yarn and it starts pulling as it goes through, what's going to happen is that the yarn thins out um, and the stitching will show. Now, so I've got it all threaded up. Let's just talk another minute about this here. I want to watch and make sure that as I, when I press start, that my yarn is coming off freely. 
depending on what kind of yarn you have up here and what spool, you could go ahead and take some off. I, I often do this because I don't want to have to worry about it getting caught or having too much tension. So I may pull off a few wraps. And honestly, you're going to be amazed at how much yarn you use when you start couching. You think that, oh gosh, this design may only use a half a yard or whatever, and it's going to use um, more than that. So make sure, so you see how I just have, have it kind of dripping here. Um, if you were to use, if you were to uh, make your own little ball of yarn here, you would kind of lay it here or puddle it here. And if you feel like you want to thread it through this little guide on the top of the machine, I have at times done that to help me. But again, I'm watching what's happening under the needle and the tension that is happening on my yarn. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and come over here. I have my design pulled up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it. And there's something that, there's a feature on this machine that I use often. Um, and I wanna go ahead and show it to you here. If I come here and I open this up, I have this needle, this is my stitch simulator. So if I touch this and then I touch start, I'm gonna magnify it for you so you can see it better. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and press that. I like to see how and where my design is gonna to start to stitch out because you can, you'll often think, oh, it's gonna start stitching here and it starts in the opposite place of where you think it's gonna stitch. And why do I wanna know that? Because I, will, I always like to be prepared for what's coming, but I also have a tail on my yarn that um, I sometimes you may find that when it starts stitching, you want to swing the tail in the other direction. So I've got it laying off to the left, and when I touch this, it starts stitching to the left. So I may want to swing this tail over to the right. And by the way, you only need a couple of inches of yarn um, when you're going to start. I've got a very long tail, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut that and get rid of that extra long. So always use this. Um, and remember where it is. I'll just refresh here. You come up here and it'll open up that window. So if I go to edit, everything that I cannot use is grayed out here. Um, so there are a few features that the machine allows me to use, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to embroidery. And it tells me up here, it's only gonna take two minutes. It's one thread change. So I'm a double checker. I like to double check that everything's good. I'm going to take this extra yarn off the top. So I'm going to go ahead and press start and stitch this out. Once it starts stitching, you can stop at any time. If you feel like it's stitching over your, your tail, you can go ahead and trim your tail. Sometimes, Depending on the design that I'm doing, um, I will swing the tail underneath there so that it hides and stitches over the little tail. I'm going to go ahead and cut my embroidery thread too. So I'm watching what's happening under my needle, but I'm also watching how my yarn is stitching, is coming off up here. Take my... So you see the machine slowed it down. It's going, the yarn is still in my pigtail. Sometimes you might find that the yarn may jump out of your little pigtail, so you need to put it back in. It's doing really nice. Now you understand why in the settings of the machine, it automatically lifts your presser foot two notches to accommodate the yarn that's traveling underneath your foot. 
So I picked a design that would stitch out quickly. Also on your screen, when we talked about um, the machine recognizing the couching design, you'll find that in the top left corner, it tells you to use the Y foot. There'll be a little picture of the foot with a pigtail. So that's really nice too, when the machine you know, designates and lets you know um, what foot to use for this technique. So it's doing really nice. Again, I'm watching my yarn, making sure that it's feeding nicely and isn't getting caught. Now let's take a look at the two-point embroidery positioning LED placement. So what does this allow us to do? Let me show you because it is super cool. So when you, when you add the upgrade, it adds new categories down here. So these are all new categories and so are these. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the little rabbit here. And so these designs um, work really well with the, the new embroidery positioning feature. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to take, select that design and I'm going to set it. This is a nice, like a corner design. It would work really nice, maybe on a, a placemat or a napkin. I'm not going to do any editing. I'm going to go to embroidery and I'm going to open my layout. And this is new here. This is your two point embroidery positioning. So when you open this up, um, it tells you up here to select the point to align. So it's giving you choices, which I always say choices are good. You want to have those depending on what project you're working on. Um, you may be coming at it from a different angle, how you're going to position your design. So I have a series of little like tags or markers, and you can see that as I select them, the little dot is moving around. So the machine is asking me, what point do you want to line up to position this design? So if I, I have on my, in my embroidery hoop, a square um, drawn out. So if I wanted to position from the bottom right corner, I can select the bottom right. So now I'm gonna to touch next. The next thing it says is select the alignment direction. The carriage of the embroidery unit will move after pressing next. So what it's asking me is, do you want to align um, vertically up on the right or do you want to align horizontally? So in this case, what I'm doing is um, positioning this in a square. So I could select either, but I'm going to select, I want to align it going horizontally. So I selected that, it lights up, that this is what we're gonna line up and I'm gonna to touch next. And it goes ahead and moves into the bottom position. In other words, my foot, my hoop moved and it's moved down here. And now it's asking me to align the LED pointer, the little light, the little beam came on. So it's asking me align the LED pointer with the point to align and the point to align is the bottom right because that's what I selected. And then press the next key, the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. So I want to align this with the bottom right of my square that I have drawn in my hoop. And the way I do that, because it's actually about an inch off, because now it's giving me the opportunity to align it, is I'm going to move my little um, pointer into the bottom right corner with my directional arrows here. This here is a, the speed control of your pointer. So if you want to be really precise, slow it down here. So I'm getting near the corner. Um, I need to go over to the right just a little bit. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. So 
maybe just a tad more. Okay, I'm in the bottom right of the corner. So now I'm done with that step, so touch next. And I selected horizontal, so it moved over to the left. Now, I happen to have a dead straight line drawn in my hoop, but if your square or your pocket or whatever it is that you've hooped is not hooped correctly and it's at an angle, you would align it up and it'll actually take your design and tilt it in the direction that you need it. So mine actually lines up perfectly. So you can see that that's my second point. So I don't need to move anything. So I'm going to say set. And so now it's moved my design into that corner. So I'm ready to stitch it out. So I'm not going to stitch this out right now because I want to show you um, a, di a different design with a different um, position. But the way you can check it is I could open this up and I could say take one step and it's going to start up in the top right. Remember what I told you before about using your stitch simulator? Because you think, I thought, that it was going to start stitching here. I'm just going to return a second and show you something. My stitch simulator, if I had start press that, I would know that it's going to start in the top right. With this kind of thing, it wouldn't make any difference anyhow. But I just want you to get into the habit of using your stitch simulator because Everything that's built into these machines is, is there for a reason and it's there to make you more successful. So again, when I go into embroidery, I've got it all placed. I would just press start and it'll stitch it out exactly where I want it, where I placed it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna select a different design so that you um, have a little better idea. So that was a corner placement. Say I select the bunny rabbit and set it and I go to embroidery. This is such a cute little design. Again, this, these designs are in the upgrade. So if you don't have the upgrade, um, you don't have this. I'm going to go to layout. I'm going to select this. Okay. So my little LED light is on. Um, so, and it automatically goes back to selecting my bottom right. But in this case, I would like to um, not position my rabbit from the bottom right. I want to position it on the center line of my square. You'll understand what I'm doing in one second. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, I want to position it in the center of my square. So center bottom actually. So I'm going to touch next and then it asks me, do you want to position it straight up and down? Um, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to position it horizontally. So now I'm going to go next and it's telling me select your center point where you want to start from. So in my square, I actually marked the center of my square with a little X. So I'm going to move this up and position it right there. This is, this is a nice little design. Um, I think they call them pocket toppers where you, you could embroider it on the top of a pocket so it looks like it's peeping out. I'm going in, I'm going to slow it down a little bit because I want to be a little bit more accurate. Okay, so that is the center of my design. I'm going to touch next. And then it's saying, okay, align it to the left. And I know that that's good. I did not draw an axis over to the left, but I know that my square is um, hooped well, perfectly, actually. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and set it. And so now what it's done is that it has centered my little rabbit over the, the mark that I did because I used my center point. So if I was to stitch it out right now, it would stitch from the, it would stitch it exactly in the center of the square as opposed to positioning it from the corners. I hope that you understand that. I'm going to go home a second and I'm going to go ahead and 
Um, I'm going to just come in here one more time. I'm going to look at what, how nice the designs are. So remember that with the upgrade, you're not just getting hardware, you're getting more quilting designs, more embroidery designs, more categories. So it really is a nice upgrade. I'm going to quickly come back here. I'm going to set it. I'm going to touch embroidery. I'm going to go to layout. See how easy this is to do? I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to come to my bottom right. I'm going to touch next. I'm going to select, actually, I'm going to select that I want it horizontal. This is just kind of recapping a little bit. I'm going to move it over and I'm going to start stitching it in a minute. Okay, here we go. Position, I'm going to slow it down. Just to recap, so you see how easy it is. So use the features that are in the upgrade because they are super easy. I'm going to go ahead and set it and then I'm done here. So I'm going to go ahead and press start and it's going to start stitching. And remember when we talked about the couching, I told you that the machine would automatically slow down to 350 stitches per minute and raise my presser foot. With this feature, I already checked. I went into the settings and it automatically went back to 1,050 stitches, um, the highest speed it has, and it dropped my embroidery foot to the proper level for embroidery. So you see how nice that's lining up? This is just gonna take five minutes, but it, it's just, it's a really, really nice um, feature in the upgrade to make you, to help you with placement and to be more successful with your embroidery without really having to um, do a lot of math or anything. So with this upgrade, you also have the ability of downloading the MyStitch Monitor app. So when, while your machine is embroidery, you can, embroidering, you can actually monitor on your phone the progress of your machine. So if your thread would break and you're not in the room with your machine, it will, you'll know and you'll be able to um, come back and get your machine embroidering again. It's, it's a cool app to have also. Now let's take a look at the matrix feature for embroidery and the no sew feature. So let's start off with the matrix. So I'm in my embroidery category and I'm going to come down to Disney. I'm going to come to category number six. It's got beautiful little designs in here and I'm going to go to page two and I'm going to select this little one eyed monster. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set it. I'm going to open up my edit and I'm going to come down here to this category and this is new. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and it automatically duplicates patterns um, for an end-to-end -end embroidery design. So you can see here that I have a hoop size here. So the machine is allowing me to select the hoop that I want and then it'll fill the appropriate amount of designs for that hoop size. So I could keep toggling through all my hoop sizes. It's quite amazing how quickly it does it. And I am going to go back to my regular hoop size. So six by six, it only fits one. Five by seven, two will fit. Four by 12, these are all optional hoops and sizes. So I'm back to my nine and a half by 14. So down here, I have some other features that I can use. If I wanted to spread them out proportionately, I can touch that. You can see I can fill my hoop a little bit more. If I want to stretch them apart this way, I can do that. If I want to squeeze them back together, I want to squeeze them all together. So if I squeeze them too much together, it's going to go ahead and kind of redesign um, my 
pattern, so to speak. So very cool, very fast and easy. It's all about fast and easy with Brother. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'm going to go home and show you something else here. I'm going to come back into embroidery. So why would you want um, or use the matrix feature? Because maybe you also want to make badges. So say I come in and I write my name. It's nice and short, so it'll be easy. So I write my name. I come into edit and I can add a, a patch stitch or a satin stitch around it. And then I can come in here and look at how quick and easy. Just like that, I've got 12, a dozen of them. Up here, it's telling me how many um, of the designs in this makeup, this design. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. You can play with your machine and see what else you can duplicate um, with that feature. Now I'm going to come back into embroidery and I am going to select category number one. Under this category, there's beautiful designs. I'm going to select design number 12 and I'm going to set it. I'm going to come to edit and I'm going to show you the no sew because to me, there's, there's a little bit of a misunderstanding about no sew. People think, well, I can just skip over, you know, a color if I don't want to do it. And, and you can, but the nice thing about no sew is that you can actually visualize, let me show you as I go along, I'm going to select no sew. You can actually visualize the design without that color. So I'm going to select no sew down here and I'm going to tell it that I don't want that blue and I don't want this blue. Um, so you select the color and you touch this and it goes away. So now you have a visual. If you want to put it back, you can touch it again and then touch that and it reverses it. So you can really visualize it. Um, let me see what other one. Let's try the teal green is just a little outline. It's not going to have too much effect. Now you can go through selecting and say, maybe, maybe I don't want that silver. I don't want it to stitch that out at all. I want to look at it. So you see, it takes it away. And then when I want to put it back, you can just touch that and it brings it back. So it's really, um, it's a feature that um, is very useful to me. So this one, I selected no sew. I'm going to deselect it and put that stitching back. So very cool feature again. So now let's take a look at what else, what else is new in the upgrade that you're adding to your machine. So we're going to come into embroidery and there's two new fonts that are added with the upgrade. You also have a new monogramming font that's added with the upgrade. You have 50 new embroidery patterns, and those are down here. We kind of looked at them a little bit before when I was showing you um, some of the features. So you have new embroidery designs, and then you have another page here. They're absolutely beautiful. Some of them, let me pull one of them up. Some of them are quite large, which is nice. This is one of my favorites. Let me go back home a second. Um, you have the quilting ones. So you've got some feathers. You've got a beautiful sewing one, kind of like an edge to edge. So new quilting patterns. Um, let me open up embroidery again. Let's go back to category two. Here's more. These are actual projects, applique projects that are in there. And then um, these are the new, what they call dimensional embroidery or crochet. And I have a, the samples right here for any of you who likes to make these. This one's beautiful, the little butterfly. Um, you would use the dissolve away stabilizer. They're very, very, very beautiful. You can stitch them together and make doilies. 
This one's gorgeous too. Of course, you've got your um, couching. Um, so all of this be new to you. Let's go back here. And then you've got the um, alphabet couched. And again, very cool um, new feature in there. So let me just go back into embroidery. So just to recap, you've got your matrix. Um, you've got your no so you've got your couching, you've got your LED placement, which works so well. Um, so again, a, you're adding a lot of value and easy features to your machine. So now let's take a look at what's new in your IQ designer with the new upgrade. Any of you that um, know me know that I say I live in the design center. So this is always very exciting to me when you have additional um, features put into the design section of the machine. So new is um, 15 additional fills. So to look at the fills, we would come here. And then you can see here where the little bubbles are, there's an arrow and it opens this up so you would select it. And here they are. So you're adding 15 more fills. And you know, in embroidery, we always want more. And I certainly use these fills all the time. So 15 new fills and also, I'm gonna say okay. And I'm gonna say okay. In the line section of the machine, you have 12 new line designs. So when you select, um, these are new line designs for assigning your stitching to a line as opposed to a fill. So now let's look at the new feature that's added to the sewing section of your machine. If you have the sewing and embroidery combination machine, the XJ1 or XJ2. So, and it is the tapering function. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And you can see that we have a certain amount of stitches that the machine is offering up that will work with this function. So we're going to go ahead and select T10. Um, I do want to show you so you have an idea of what you could do with this kind of stitching. This is a beautiful sample from our machine department where we used the tapering, the different stitches um, to create a design or a pattern with a tapering finish and end. OK, so we selected stitch number T10. And we're going to come over here after selecting the stitch and we're going to open up this window. So we have the tapering switched on because we want to taper the beginning and the end of this stitch. So you do have the option of switching off the tapering either at the beginning or the end of the stitch, but we want it on for both of them. So when I, the start, which is, you can see here that it's light blue. The machine has selected the start. So I'm going to touch select and I can select what degree I want to start this, um, my pattern stitching off. So I can toggle through and change it. You can see that this is changing. And why would you want to change it? Because maybe when you get to the corner of your stitching, you may want to do a 50 degree turn. And so the stitching would be stitched at such an angle that it would turn nicely when you continue that way. 
So for different shapes that you do, you can taper the end for continuous, um, so that it does, it's one stitch isn't stepping over the other, so to speak, when you change the angle or the direction of your stitching. So um, you can see, you can kind of preview it because it's changing as I change the degrees. Let me go ahead and leave it at, um, actually, I'm going to touch that 30 degree. I like that. Okay, so then I'm going to say, what do I, you want at the end? And you might want the very same end, so it works the same way. So now I'm going to say, okay. And so the ending style, I have two options here. And definitely this is a time when you need to test. And I have been testing. I have my test piece here. Um, I've been testing just on a piece of felt. So I've just drawn some straight lines. I actually, you know, if you're, if you're doing a particular cushion or a particular project where you want a defined length, you're going to have to do this first. Um, to get the defined length. Okay, so we selected 30 degrees to start with and we selected 30 degrees to end with. And then the machine is asking me, I'm just going to put my felt underneath here. There's two options here. So when I select the first one, this is where I could just sew, pretty much just put my foot down and start sewing. And it's going to taper to start with. And when I get to the desired finished length that I want, what I would do is I would select my reverse stitch button. I'm not sewing very straight here, but so it's going to continuously sew until I get to the desired length that I want. And then I would select if I'm getting to the end and I touch this, the reverse, it's going to start stitching out my tapering end. And then it's going to stop. I'm going to cut my thread. And there it is. So it's, it's a very pretty little stitch, this one, very decorative. Looks like ribbon almost or lace. So now you have a second option. I could come over here and I could, after stitching out one length, so to speak, I could tell the machine, I want, and you can see here, this is what I was talking about. It's going to tell you the approximate length depending on how many times you select this. So you can see that, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see. You can see that it's lengthening here. And as, I, as I'm adding another pattern, my actual length is getting longer and it's telling me here. So say I select 10, approximately 3.1. Now remember in the beginning I told you that I did um, 12 times here. I did 12 times and the machine told me here that it would be approximately 3.7 and it actually came out at 3.25. So that's why you have to test. Okay, so now I'm telling it 10 times. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. I also wanna show you something while I'm doing this that is very, um, very nice feature on this machine for positioning. I'm gonna switch on my laser light. And can you see when I switch that on that it's running straight through the center of my design? So it'll keep me straight. If I've drawn a straight line, I can place that right on the center. I can also move it. So if I wanted to run my stitching along the side of that line, because I want to put that line maybe on the edge of my project and have it stitch on top, I can do that. And seven millimeter is um, the widest, 3.5. This has a, a stitch width capability of seven millimeters. So 3.5 millimeter is the center. And just another little tip here, if I was to take that to say 5.5 to the right, if I touch this, it moves it to the same 
distance from the center to the left. See how I'm doing that? So that's something really handy to have too. Okay, I'm gonna bring it back to the center because I wanna position my stitching over the center and then I'm gonna put that, that um, line over the line that I've drawn on my fabric. So now when I put my presser foot down and I press start, it's gonna do stitch out and you see how what I'm doing is guiding. I'm looking here and making sure that my light is on my line. It actually measures just about two and three quarter inches long. And this is telling me 3.1. So again, it's telling me that it would be the approximate length. So um, make sure you double check before you start on your project. Okay, now let's take another look at our um, sewing screen. So we just did the tapering. Right above the tapering is a category with an S for sashiko stitching. So I have four stitches here that I can select from, and it tells me here um, the number of the stitch, so or where I'm at. So the, the C here, if I was to touch that, it's for free motion couching. So I'm not going to show that right now. I'm going to go to the next one, which is for the hand look quilting, kind of a sashiko look. So I have three different options because I have three different lengths. So I'm going to go ahead and select SO2. And I'm going to come up here because I want you to use this feature on your machine. If you come up to the question mark to pattern explanation, because you're not sure, you've never selected the stitch before, maybe you don't know why you would use it, this is a very nice shortcut not having to go and get your manual or look anything up. So it tells you this stitch pattern is made up of several short stitches. Sew the stitch pattern using transparent nylon thread or lightweight thread with a color matching the fabric for the upper thread to give your project the look of hand sewing. If the bobbin thread has a color different from the fabric, the stitch pattern will stand out. So a great explanation tells you the number of the stitch and then it tells you what foot to use. So I'm gonna to touch return and then I'm going to close out of this and it'll bring me back to my screen. So I set up my machine on the top of the machine. I actually put my 60 weight embroidery bobbin thread. Um, and on the bottom in the bobbin, I put a 50 weight red thread so that that will show up and the white, the really lightweight white thread will not show up. So I'm going to go ahead put my presser foot down and I'm going to press start and it's taking several short stitches and then taking a space and I'm stitching without a foot control. I'm using my start stop button, which I do quite frequently. And you can see this stitch, it's actually stitching in left needle position. I could change that if I wanted. Okay, let me go ahead and stop it and I'm gonna pivot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my thread so that you can see how nice that looks. So you see there's actually really lightweight thread in between there, but you can't see it because it's 60 weight um, thread on the top. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it back in and I'm gonna select the next one. SO3 and I'm going to press start and you'll see the difference and you you can see also that on my screen where it says length the length is striped out in other words I can't it's a preset length for this stitch but what they're doing is they're giving me three different lengths to um, select from. So I do have different lengths, but I cannot adjust. 
So this is, let me go ahead and stop it. Cut my thread. And that's a slightly longer. So that's SO3. And then if I select SO4, just do this one quickly. My stitch length is going to be even longer. So if you're doing a delicate project, you might want to select your shorter stitch. It would also take less time to stitch out if you have a longer stitch. So now let's talk about the magnetic frame, the 7 by 12 that comes with the upgrade. I personally love magnetic frames. Why do I love them? Because I embroider a lot on vinyl. And so I don't want to get hoop burn on my vinyl. But also, it's very hard to hoop vinyl, to get it to, to really hold while you're embroidering. So I, I, it's difficult to do, to be honest with you, a heavier vinyl. So I love magnetic frames. And I was thinking about it. I think that probably 50% of the time that I embroider, I use some form of a magnetic frame. That's how much I like them and how they work for what um, the kind of embroidery that I do. So let's take a look at it down here. You'll see a sample here of an embroidered piece of vinyl. Beautiful. Can you see that it's not damaged in any way around it? Um, let's roll this up. So I already have taken the magnets off the magnetic frame, but you can see here, this is where the magnets attach to the magnetic frame. And it comes with four, four long ones. Let me move this over a little bit. It comes with four long ones and four short ones. So let's go ahead. So this is the arm that goes in the machine. And by the way, this hoop will not work with every machine. It's got to be, have the update or the upgrade for this hoop. A lot of people want these magnetic hoops, but they don't all work for every machine. So I'm going to go ahead and take my vinyl and I'm just going to lay it across my frame like that. And then what you do is your long ones work on the long, the length, so to speak, and then the short ones work on the top and bottom. So the magnetic frame, the magnetics, all have a little arrow that points to the direction of where you want to put it. So what you do is you start on one side. I'm going to start on this side, snap it down. I'm going to take another one, snap it down. See how easy that is? A lot of people think, because we talk to a lot of people here, that they're not easy to use, but they are. They're very easy to use. Okay. So if you were um, hooping fabric, you would want to make sure, let me just take this off, you could almost go like this and smooth it out and then swipe it across so you have a nice smooth surface. You can also put stabilizer underneath it if you want, um, which I often do, but not with vinyl. Okay, then I'm gonna take my short ones and then you can just snap it down, snap it down, super easy. And you know, if you have um, trouble with your hands, I have a bit of trouble with my hands with arthritis, it's so much easier so much easier than hooping. So there you go. That's how easy it is. Thank you for watching my instructional video on the upgrade. Remember to always give us a call if you have any questions. And if you're interested in any of these machines, please give us a call also, or if you would like to purchase the upgrade from us. Thanks for watching.